Okay, so we need to add UV coordinates in order to get our texture to work. If you haven't looked at the textbook yet about this, you should definitely look at the textbook. So here we are in our shader, and we previously had an attribute variable for passing position. So I'm going to add an attribute variable right here for passing UV. And instead of a VEC4, we're now going to have a VEC2. Um, and we're going to do this because um, our UV coordinates only have two parameters instead of four parameters. And so what do we have to do with this um, VEC2? Let's don't worry about hooking it up actually into our shaders yet. We're going to just uh, make sure that it's declared here. And then later in our code, right, we have to have a global. This is our JavaScript uh, attribute for UV. And then when we set up our connections to GLSL variables, in the same way that we set up a connection for position and that we made for all of our uniforms, we have to set up a connection for our attribute for UV. And so now we have to decide what to do with this. So these need to get passed at the same time that we're passing our positions. So where is it that we do that? Um, it's possible that it's inside of our cube. It's possible that it's inside so here we are inside of our cube class. Um, and remember when we do a render, um, we set up the matrix and then we just call draw triangle, draw triangle, draw triangle. Um, and what we really wish is that instead of just giving positions to this triangle, we could also give UV coordinates to this triangle. So here I've established a new function, uh, draw triangle 3D UV, which is going to have some UV coordinates passed in, right? So this is the position one, two, and three of our triangle. This is position one, two, and three for the UV coordinates for each of those vertices. So now how are we going to define that? So let's go over to our triangle uh, class. And remember, we previously had a draw triangle, and then we made a draw triangle 3D, right? Where we, only change we made was we copied this thing into a, into a new thing, into a new function, and then we changed it so that we were passing 3.3 values for each vertex instead of passing two values for each vertex. So here, rather than change my existing draw triangle 3D, just for debugging help, I'm going to just make a brand new function. Now, why am I doing this? I'm making a brand new function where I just copied it down um, so that I can leave all my existing code in place while I'm experimenting with getting my new function to, to work. So of course, you could modify your function. I just find it easier to debug if I don't destroy my already working code. So this function, draw triangle 3D, is already working. So I'm not going to mess with it. I'm going to make a new one. Um, draw triangle 3D UV, and I've copied it in. So the initial part of this function is the same. And what have I done? To draw the triangle, we had to make a buffer to put all of our positions. So we created a buffer, we bound the buffer, we send the data for the actual vertices across to the buffer. We set the pointer um, and set up these things. So I'm taking exactly this piece of code which existed in the prior function. And I've copied it down into this piece of code, which is exactly the same, except for I've renamed things to say, I'm now going to make a UV buffer um, with a create buffer and a UV buffer. And now I'm going to pass the UV coordinates rather than the vertices into this. Um, and once I've set up both buffers, I've set up a vertex buffer and a UV buffer, now I'm in a position to call draw arrays on this triangle. Um, and the UV was here, it was a parameter. I added a parameter for vertices and UV. So we're ready to take a look and see what's going to happen when we try to, to run this code, right? I'm going to set it up to be used only on the first triangle. I'm still debugging. I'm still trying to see if this is working. So here was my draw triangle commands. And I'm going to take my first triangle, modify it to 3D UV, um, so that I'm using the same thing and then pass this second parameter, which is the UV coordinates, so that I've made minimal changes in my code. And I'm just seeing, can I pass this extra data into my vertex shader? So let's go try to run this thing. And nothing, black screen. So let's take a look at our errors. So I come over here to my console window and I have a lot of errors. There's in fact too many errors. So no more can be reported. This is terrible. What's going on? Uh, Something's out of range. I don't know what this means, but I'm going to go up to my first error. And my first error is I failed to get the storage location of AUV. So let's see where this happened. So this happened when I was trying to 
inside of connecting variables to GLSL, I wasn't able to connect AUV. So this is the new variable I just made. Ah, maybe I named it wrong. Let's go see what's, what's going on. Why is it that I can't get this AUV to be attached to my JavaScript A AUV? So let's go take a look inside uh, connecting variables to GLSL where we set this up. Let's just check if we accidentally wrote any bugs in our naming. AUV, um, and this is the thing it can't find. This is JavaScript, so it shouldn't be a problem with naming of this one. It should be a problem with naming of this. A underscore cap UV. Okay, so now we come up here to our shader. Here's our variable, A underscore cap UV. So what's going on? Seems like it should attach. So I've skipped the debugging that I had to do to figure this out, but it turns out that the compiler for this little program is smart. And our existing program sets the GL position. You, right now, you guys only have a global rotation matrix if you're left over from your animal program. I've already added the new matrices. We'll come back to that in a, in a later video. So I haven't used AUV anywhere. And the compiler says you didn't use it, therefore just delete the variable. So I'm going to take an action here, which is I'm going to set the varying variable to the attribute variable. Um, and what is this going to do? This is going to now tell the compiler I'm actually using that thing. And so I should be able to get it passed through. So I'm going to come back and talk about this for a second. But let's see whether this is actually going to have any impact on what's, go what's going on. Well, I now have a different error that's happening. Um, but I don't have the same error anymore. So let me go and talk about that varying variable for just a minute. And then we'll come back and we'll figure out this error. So what is a varying variable? So see here I have a varying variable and I've just named it V for the varying UV because it's going to be the same thing and I'm just passing through. So these are the variables that came from JavaScript and they're attributes so they come by each vertex. So each one of my three vertices in my triangle is each going to have a different UV. I need to get that to my fragment shader because that's where I'm going to actually use this information. So to pass things from the vertex shader to the fragment shader, I assign them into a varying variable. So I've now assigned it here. And I'm going to take this same exact uh, definition, this varying variable, and I'm going to declare it here in the shader, in the, in the fragment shader. And I now have access to it in the fragment shader. And so we're now going to be able to use it inside the fragment shader. Now, I haven't done that yet. So in fact, because I've got that line still commented out, we'll come back to that. Um, so we would expect it to also get rid of this in the compile. But this is a varying variable, so it's not going to be the same error in the code. So, so we'll adjust that later, um, if need be. Uh, but right now, we're just worried about getting it to pass and getting things to compile. Remember, we used a VEC2 here, so there are going to be some things that are different than the VEC4 that we did in position. We need to remember to pass two things when we're doing this. So let's go back and look at the error that we had. So what is the error that we have now? Now we have an error that says our vertex buffer is not big enough for the draw call. What the heck does this mean? Why, why is this happening? So where, where are we getting this? We don't even know. It's in some piece of code. I don't know what's going on. I don't know where is it happening. Um, so again, after much debugging, uh, I figured out where this is happening. And so I can come back and show you uh, where. So this is happening because the vertex buffer is not big enough in the draw call. So where is it? that we're actually doing that. That's over here in triangle, right? We're setting up the buffers over here in the triangle, and then we're calling draw triangles. So these buffers have to have the right amount of data. So the only thing we did new was set this up. The draw raise is the same as it was. So we set up this new buffer. So there's something funny happening in this new buffer. So when we're passing UV, we're passing two variables, right? So the buffer length of this of this buffer that we're passing in, this UV variable right here, this UV variable is coming from our cube right here. So this is the UV variable. So it has six items in it, two for each, uh, two for each vertex. But over here in triangles, this attribute pointer right here, this number is the one that says how many things that they're supposed to be. So we've seen this once before. We had this exact bug previously when we changed our 2D draw triangle into a 3D draw triangle. So in our 2D draw triangle, we said that everything is supposed to have two data points, X and Y. 
And then we got to our 3D triangle and we said we need to have three data points, X, Y, Z. So now we're back down here. We've still got X, Y, Z, but we're only supposed to have UV. So this is supposed to be a two because that's all the data we're passing. We're only passing two pieces of data in. And let's see whether this is gonna fix up our bug. Okay, so we now got rid of our bugs. I still don't have any text or anything happening. Um, I've got my, my arm, right, that I had previously. Um, what is this white thing? This was me trying to start adding a ground plane. And I stopped trying to add the ground plane because I realized that the near and far clipping planes are quite close and it was cutting off my plane and making things weird. So I'm gonna delay talking about the ground plane and skyboxes until much later, um, after we've set up perspective and we've adjusted our near and far planes. But that's the reason you see it sitting here in my code, looking a little bit weird, is because I was trying to get it first. Uh, but I had to abandon. Okay, so now, how are we gonna to get to see something about these texture coordinates that we're in theory passing, but we don't actually know if it's working yet? So let's go back to our world. Let's take a look at what's going on. We're passing our UV coordinates. They're in varying, but we're not using them yet. So here, I'm going to just uncomment this line. So we were previously setting our fragment color, meaning the pixel color, to whatever is the color we passed for the cube. I'm now going to set the pixel color to whatever I passed for UV. So I'm not looking up a texture yet. I'm just taking whatever the colors that, that I passed in and I, so this is red and green when I construct this color, right? This is the first two values. And then blue, I'm setting to always one. So blue is set there and alpha is set to one. So I've got the red and green set to something that, I, that I'm passing in. So let's see what's going to happen with this. Okay, now we've made some changes to how things look. Now there's something that's a little bit funny going on here. Um, namely, all of the triangles got updated with this information, and that's not what I did. What I did was, in my cube, only one of my triangles, only this first triangle, I set some UV coordinates. So why are all these other triangles that I'm drawing are also getting this color update value? Well, that's because we set up the attribute vector, and then we never changed it again. So if we look inside of our draw triangle, so for the front triangle, we did this draw 3D UV, we set up what was gonna happen with A position, and then we set up what's gonna happen with the UV. And then for the remainder of the triangles, we used this call to draw 3D. And we never said anything about UV again, so it just stayed set, the same as it was previously. So therefore it got propagated onto all the other triangles. So this is not really what we want, but on the other hand, we're about to change to pass UV coordinates for all of our triangles. So we can just go ahead and do that and set the UV coordinates for all of our triangles. Um, and then it's gonna get reset because we're gonna be using the other call. So I'm not gonna worry about this particular bug because it's not gonna affect. So next I wanna take a look and see whether or not these colors make any sense. I have a cyan, I have a magenta, and I have a white at the corners of each of my triangles. Um, and so let's go see whether that matches the information that we were actually passing in. Just, this is just sanity check. So in our cube, what we were passing in was red, no green, and remember we set blue in the vertex shader, right? So red and blue is magenta, and then we set a red, green, and blue. Okay, there's our cyan, and then we have one, one, and then one from the blue, white. So our colors do, in fact, make sense. So we have some confidence that we're passing in. So I've now adjusted my first two triangles to try to get my front face of my cube to have sensible UVs. So I've set these UV values so that um, they span the square in the, in the right way. So here we can see, rather than seeing two triangles, we see smoothly varying UV over the, the course of our triangle. And this corner, uh, of course, of our front face of this square, right? So the two triangles don't have a discontinuity. So this corner is zero, zero UV. This corner is one, zero UV. This, this corner is one, one UV. And this corner is zero, one UV. So I've got these set up. Now, 
that's only happening on the front face of my cubes because I've only set it there, right? After that, I just have whatever values are getting passed through. And of course, if we look on the side, we just have whatever junk is getting passed through. So what do I need to do um, is I need to go and edit the rest of my faces of my cubes to have UV. So I, I'm going to do that, but I'm not going to show you because I think you can get those updates made so that your UV coordinates are everywhere correct on your cube. I'm only using this as color right now. We haven't set up the actual texture yet, but we're going to um, do that in a moment. So I go now and like get all the rest of your sides of your